Hello, chill computer guy. Today we're in Propeller Head Reason 10. Haven't made a video in a while. I'm hoping everybody had a great holiday and a wonderful New Year's. Um, hopefully you set out some New Year's resolutions. Um, try to make your goals obtainable. That's very, very important. You know, challenge yourself, but make your goals obtainable. Um, that's super important. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the sequencer, just real basic stuff. Uh, these are things that most Reason users already know, um, but they're actually things that didn't used to be there in previous uh, versions of Reason, and basically workflow modifications. Uh, if there is one thing about propeller head Reason that I do complain about a little bit, it's the workflow, because there are workflow issues, you know, um, with the sequencer, but. The sequencer all in all is actually really, really a, a great, great uh, place to design your MIDI in, you know. Um, it has a lot of things that a lot of sequencers from other DAWs don't. Um, in this particular uh, video, we're just going to talk about some just quick things that they have either changed or added to the sequencer over the last uh, few releases here. So, um... Let's go ahead and go sequencer full screen. And you can see we have the Thor. All right, so let's start off with this manual record button. Now this is a new thing. And what this does is if you click this, it's gonna deactivate all your tracks for recording in other words if you have random midi lanes and random tracks that that are either red here you know you'll have the midi lane red or the record red these are armed uh, is, in other words if you hit this main record button any automation you do is going to be recorded or any notes you play will be recorded so there's the recording for the midi and then the recording for the automation and um Sometimes, if you have tons of tracks here, there'll be random ones that are just, just uh, for some reason, are enabled through clicking and whatnot. If you just click on manual record here, it will automatically deactivate all the record buttons from all your devices. Um, and that includes automation, MIDI, and audio as well. And what's nice about actually having this on is the only way you're going to actually record is if you physically go there and hit the record button so that's something that's new and it's something that i actually find myself using quite a bit um, we still have the blocks and the song mode blocks mode we're gonna have a tutorial coming up on that if you don't know about it blocks mode is a very good way to work here in propeller head reason um, and uh, like I say, we're going to have a video coming up in the future on blocks mode, so be sure to subscribe. Disable your muting or disable your soloing for all tracks simultaneously. Very handy. Right here, if we want to add a note lane, you click here. And you can add as many as you want. This is a powerful feature if you think about it. A lot of DAWs don't have the option to add multiple MIDI lanes to the same instrument. Think about that. And for propeller head reason, you can just by hitting this plus. Okay, so if you want to, uh, if you want to put this on a two-bar loop, and you know audition tons, tons of MIDI loops, you can do that. And you just hit this X, and it will cancel them all out. And then you can also add an automation lane here as well. So this is going to be all your parameters, um, you know, for your key sync and whatnot. But there's much, much easier way to add automation, but this is one way to do it. Um, this is going to be for sequencers. Well, you can change your uh, your pattern. This is going to be for all pattern-based uh, sequencers and whatnot. Um, you can create separate pattern lanes, so you can switch from one pattern to the next. Um, so, yeah, all good things. We have an edit mode here. If you double-click, you're going to add a clip. And if you double click again, you're going to be in edit mode. Now, in previous versions of Reason, you could not actually cut this in edit mode. In other words, if I want to cut this clip, I can actually cut it right here in edit mode. Um, not only that, but I can actually control A or lasso all these, right click and join these. Now, 
In previous versions, you had to actually exit out of edit mode and do it um, on the main timeline. But now you can actually do those features are available inside edit mode, which is a huge, huge time saver. Not only that, if you create a, a simple little pattern here, let's see, let's create a simple little pattern here. Um, now normally you would uh, click this and hit control D, control D, control D, maybe duplicate this out so it's four bars long. Well, now you can actually lasso those and join clips right from within the edit mode and then if you double click again you can see that this is all one single clip so now you can make um you know some some adjustments in there and have them loop every uh you know two bars or so as opposed to every bar and having to to go into each individual clip you can just right click join clips and then double click again and that will put you all inside one single clip now if we play this you can hear You know, there's our hook, but what's very unique about Propeller Head Reason, which is very different from other DAWs, is the fact that you can hold control. If you go right to the end of the clip, hold the control key, you'll get this, uh, what looks like a clock icon. And what this is actually doing is it's time stretching your clip. So if we have this out, it's two bars long, and then we stretch it down to one bar long. Now, instead of 16th, these are actually 32nd notes. Or if you double it, if you stretch this out so it's four bars long, now these are going to be eighth notes. So very handy to be able to do that uh, as opposed to, you know, actually uh, going in and, and doubling the length of each individual note. Not only that, but you can actually do that within edit mode now. So you can be within edit mode and do time stretching within edit mode. So really, really powerful. You used to not be able to do... Um, this within the editor um, and there's a lot of these things that you used to uh, th that you could always do in the past but you had to exit out into the timeline mode you can use the razor tool you can join your clips and you can also do the time stretch tool all from within edit mode which is a huge huge uh, time saver there now also you can mute the entire clip within edit mode I wish you could uh, mute individual notes I don't know if that's coming in the future but if you uh of course if you mute one note it's going to mute all the notes in the entire but still you know handy to be able to to mute the clip for without without exiting um on the the edit mode there now also in edit mode you can use your uh, your magnifying glass and get right in there which is uh which is very handy but you don't actually even have to do that anymore what you can do is you can just use the actual zoom tool so if i highlight let's say i highlight these four notes if i hit z it's going to zoom into those four notes. Now you can also hit this little icon here. This is the new zoom tool or hit the letter Z on your keyboard and that's going to zoom into whatever notes you have selected. So if you need to get in here and do some fine tuning, that's great. You can get in here, turn your snap off and uh, make some super fine tune adjustments here with your notes, which is something that I do recommend to give your music more of a human feel is to uh, get in there and, and just really, really make those notes so they're slightly off the grid uh, that'll give you give your, uh, your your tune a little bit more feel to it now another tip is now let's say I stretch this clip now we got a two bar loop but you can see that our, our end marker is still at one bar what you can do is if you whatever clip you have selected if you hit the capital letter P whatever clip you have highlighted will automatically represent the loop markers so if I hit P you can see that the loop markers have conformed to the selection. By hitting Z, you can zoom into it. It's not going to play, but it will actually zoom in. So whatever you have selected, if you hit the Z, it will zoom into full screen. Another helpful hint. Um, now on the side here, you can increase and decrease the height of this track and that's the maximum height that it goes right there or you can decrease it and if you hold down on the alt and hit the uh, triangle you can collapse these tracks for maximum screen real estate when you're doing larger projects so that's another handy thing there now i can't emphasize enough the uh use of the capital letter p on the keyboard now whatever notes you have highlighted if you hit the capital letter p it's automatically going to put those within the loop braces and play from those selected notes
Oh my goodness, there's hooks all over the place. Boy, that's a mess. But you can kind of see the point here um, to these shortcuts. The fact that you can really start to toss around a lot of ideas, find something that actually works for the track that you're working on, and maybe create a hook in the meantime. Now we also have all of our usual um, options up here. We can turn our snap off and on. We can select our grid. I wish this went up to one, to two and four bars. That'd be really great. So the maximum is one bar. Oh well, oh well. Uh, the position of the note, if we want to get a fine tune um, uh, adjustment, we can do this here. Same with the length, um, the actual note, and then the velocity. Um, you can see if I have multiple notes selected, you're going to see an equal sign here. What this is going to do is it's going to make all the notes conform to whatever velocity is or position or length is selected here. Now you can see that, that this says uh, D3, so whatever note is selected is D3. If I hit equal, then they're all going to go to D3. So that's a good way to, like if you're working on a drum pattern or a bass, a bass pattern and you want it all to go to the kick drum, this is a really good way to do it, is to take your, your bass pattern and just conform it all to the C2 or wherever your kick drum is at. Um, same with the velocity, you know, if these are all different velocities, let's see, these are all different velocities, you can actually uh, control A, hit the equal, and equal, all their velocities will be equal, and then you can, you know, of course, control multiple velocities with one quick pull there so that's a handy thing um so yeah check out the sequencer uh you have this plus and minus this increases the height of your uh of your uh, midi lane there so that's kind of handy also if you have an audio let's see you have an audio lane here uh, let's do an audio track here and you pull some audio into here let's do some audio let's see here so uh, one shots i guess so uh, Mm, that's pretty spicy. Let's say you got your audio in here. What you can do is you can actually decrease and increase. So now this isn't actually doing anything to the gain level of the signal. It's just basically changing the graphic. So if you have a, you know, if you're using a, a really small waveforms and you're having a hard time seeing them, you can increase and decrease them down here. Again, it's just a visual thing. It's not affecting the gain of anything. Um, but yeah, so also with working with audio. Now with working with audio, you're going to have multiple options as far as editing. You have a slice editor, which is very, very powerful. You have a pitch editor. Now the pitch editor is great for doing vocals and whatnot. You can actually correct the pitch right here. And uh, I'm actually going to have a video coming up on the pitch editor. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Uh, and then we have the comp editor. So if you're doing multiple takes, they're all going to show up down here. And then you can kind of, uh, you know, you can put those takes together, create crossfades and create like the perfect uh, vocal take so this is another panel that I plan on having a tutorial uh, for in the in the future so it, so yeah we're gonna have another tutorial on this because this panel is actually quite uh, complex but there's a lot going on here that is is very powerful so again that's uh, the audio track and then across the top here you can see we have different uh, options based on whichever editor we're in uh, we have the note the fine tune the drift the preserve the transition the format and the level db so again we're gonna have more tutorials coming up on this particular uh, pitch editor and working with audio here in propeller head reason if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up and let me know what type of videos you would like to see. Thanks again now.